After working so many years for Tom Ford Fragrances, what comes in at your number one? Hey guys, welcome back to Kev TV. Today, I want to talk about Tom Ford, a brand that we don't have in Oligarch, but one of my favorite fragrance brands. I had to call up my fragrance, my perfume brother, who's right now actually over in Nigeria. So we're shooting this live for you guys. What's up, Omar? How are you, bro? Hey, Kev, how's it going, man? Good, bro. Do you want to tell the people a bit about your background experience selling fragrances? I started working in designer fragrances, and that was what kickstarted my journey in 2017. And then I fast forward to 2018, I got into Tom Ford. So I got picked up by Tom Ford. I kind of got poached by Tom Ford, if we're being honest. Oh, good where... salesman. Good yeah, salesman. exactly. <laughs> so I was so good, they kind of poached me away from designer fragrances. So I am a Tom Ford specialist. I am trained across the entire signature of line as well as the private blend um, like because the private blend makes up most of the money in the Tom Ford brand anyway so I am highly uh, trained well I actually wanted to get you on because I want to know from well because I guess you have the most exposure to the Tom Ford brand because you're selling it right yeah. so from you a sales rep for Tom Ford yeah. what are your Tom Ford fragrance picks what are your favorite ones I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of narrow it down to a top five that I own personally, yeah. that I really lean towards yeah. do most of the time. I would start off with Tobacco Venue as an honorable mention. So it's not in my top yeah. five, but it's something I kind of need to have in my collection. So it's a Tobacco Venue, it's there, it works, it's never changed, it's never been reformulated. Tell me why. Tobacco Venue is supposed to smell like a gentleman's club in the 1930s. So that was the whole idea. It's oh. supposed to be reminiscent, yes. Of, uh, um, so there's usually in the Tom Ford brand, each fragrance has three keywords that are associated to it. I do not honestly remember the tobacco of a new three keywords, but I do remember some of them and I will just breeze through a couple of them afterwards. But um, yeah, so Tobacco Avenue is supposed yeah. to be reminiscent of a gentleman's club. So the 1930s gentleman's club, not the 2020 gentleman's club. Yeah. That's where men actually sit down and you can actually smell cigarettes and you can yeah. smell the booziness like, from the cognac and then you can smell yeah. the spices. Classy cigars, right? Like a cigar club, yeah? Absolutely, absolutely. So it was something yeah. like that. So that's what the tobacco veneer was supposed to be reminiscent of. And it yeah. gives you that. So you get the spiciness. There's a couple of spices there. I think mostly it'll be like clove, ginger. You get the full on tobacco, like you get the cigar smell and then you get the sweetness from the vanilla. And then you get yeah. a couple of other like naughty sort of elements as well, like dry fruits as well. But I think your nose kind of has to evolve towards, um, your nose kind of has to grow into it before you can get those ones. But anyways, like I said, Tobacco Venue, honorable mention. The viewers actually don't know this, but, but yeah. this was actually a gift from you, my brother, which you gave to me last year. I got you. Bro. So that's why you. you didn't have it in your collection, yeah. no? Of course, man. Told you I got you. Thank you very much. No, I appreciate no it, man. No worries, man. Anytime, bro. Anytime. So starting um, off with the ones that you brought with you today, yeah. what's your first one? So I'll start from number five. Number five here yeah. is Neroli Portofino Forte. So the Neroli Portofino mm -hmm. comes in two types. There is the original Neroli Portofino or the Parfum. And then this is the Forte version. It's just a flanker. It's a much stronger one. So the three words that are associated to this, vibrant, sparkling, and transportive. And this is supposed to be reminiscent of uh, Portofino, which is in the coast of Italy. So it smells like you get your fresh florals and you also get your citruses, your bergamot. Yeah. You get your orange blossom there. You also get your neroli. So this is sweet, clean. It just works, especially for the weather mm -hmm. that I'm in as well. And surprisingly, oh, you do have blood orange. This is very heavy on blood orange as well. So if you're a big fan of blood orange, this one's for you. You might not want to miss out. Slightly more expensive than the usual. It's about 80 more dollars, I think. Yeah, about 80 more dollars more expensive than the original Neroli Portofino. How come you picked that over the classic Portofino? Is it because of the performance? Yeah, it's just, it's, it's deeper. It's a lot deeper. Yeah, performance wise and the DNA slightly changed as well. Because I got tired of smelling the Neroli Portofino from 20, 2007, yeah. Originally when the tire line launched, this yeah. one was introduced in about, I think 2014 or 15 or so. So it just kind of gave it a newer depthness to it as well. And I was like, ah, there's a lot more facets and elements to it. And I was like, okay, this is deeper. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this one. Number four comes in Woodward. 
Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be Woodward. Ooh, <laughs> classic. That's like Tom Ford classic. Those who like dark woody fragrances. So usually Woodward will be higher up on the list. It's still pretty high up. I mean, it, it is top five. So this is number four. Reason why it's number yeah. four is simply because I think I've had it for the longest time and I've been using it since 2010. So I think I'm kind of yeah. like, I still lean towards it, but I mostly use it to layer some of my fragrances. And the three words, if I remember, are rare, exotic, and distinctive. Those are the yeah. three words. So as we all know, oud naturally is found in places like Laos, Thailand, Brunei. Original smell of oud is supposed to smell like Barnyadi, Skanky. In 2007, somehow, Tom Ford actually got this and he actually, he kind of made it really wearable. So I think this was the first sort of most approachable oud you can get on the market in 2007. Yeah. So I think that was why this was a massive hit for him because most of the oud fragrances are generally really strong, but this one's like really soft, you know? You get yes. like really nice wafts. It's not the very heavy and skanky oud. It's a very well refined oud. You also get like nice sandalwood elements to it, Brazilian rosewood yeah. elements, and a lot of vetiver, some cardamom as well. So brilliant fragrance. Like I said, I mostly use it for layering. If I want a bit of depth on some of my other fragrances, I just apply a yeah. couple on. But I wear it individually on its own as well, especially in like a meeting sort of setting. If it's like a small room, we're doing sort of like a meeting. I want like a clean, nice scent that is sophisticated. Woodward is my yeah. go-to. Again, to your point, I think it was yeah. really cool that um, around that year, Tom Ford really brought your traditional um, Oods actually are quite barnyard stinky if you yeah, get like absolutely. a um, heavy scent or yeah. like a heavy ingredient in a perfume. But Tom Ford, I found one of the first guys to really do it in a kind of mass appealing way where your everyday people wouldn't get offended by that stinky oud which we oh, yeah. usually find in traditional oud perfumes it's Absolutely. quite a nice uh, toned down woody um, yeah. fragrance are you finding that you're wearing it a bit less because the weather over there in nigeria is it a bit too hot for it no nah, like i said personally i don't care but um <laughs> uh, yeah i do wear it a lot less so usually i limit it to nighttime so usually when it's dark and it's much cooler outside yeah. and then i would lean towards or if i'm indoors like um, at the office what do you have coming in at number three and number three, we have Italian Cypress. So Italian Cypress, um, Italian Cypress came out in 2010. Yeah, it launched in like yeah. 2010. Yeah, yeah. Some, somewhat about because yeah, 2010. Because I, I worked for Tom Ford in 2015, 2016 for yeah. a couple of years. To be honest, I've actually never had my nose on it before. Is it correct that they discontinued it? I am not 100% sure, so please do not quote me on that. <laughs> Mr. Ford yeah. sees this. It was around for some time, and then it, it was so good, it was, dis it was discontinued, and a lot of people were disappointed. And then he brought it back yeah. in 2018. He brought it back in a reserve collection. So it's a couple of fragrances uh... that used to be in the range that were brought back as reserve blend collections. Uh, they were almost double the price anyways, but they were kind of worth it. Italian Cypress is something that I always wanted anyways. Italian Cypress smells like, it's predominantly Cypress. So if you know what Cypress smells like, Cypress is like a piney, sort of citrusy. It has so many different faces to it, but I think yeah. predominantly- A bit green as well. Yeah, green, yeah. So it has the green face to it. You can get the greenness. You get the fougere sort of yeah. DNA as well. Citrus bits, you get the woody bits. What kind of weather and stuff? Like when do you find yourself wearing this Italian Cypress? Is it a fresh thing to wear on a hot day? So I think this leans towards the spring, summer kind of time, but you can also get away in winter and um, fall, simply because it has the woody yeah. sort of facets. It's strong enough to actually perform in winter, but it just is, I think yeah. this is best. It smells best when it's really nice and sunny outside. And then what do you have coming in at number two? And uh, number two comes in Tusca Leather. Tusca Leather is a cult favorite. It's a fan's favorite. Classic cult favorite. favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You can never go wrong with this. So there's three descriptive words for uh, Tusca Leather, according to Mr. Ford, a supple, primal, and extravagant. Primal is there because it actually smells like animalic leather. It literally smells like a leather of an actual animal. Not in this yeah. kind of key sort of way, don't you? A nice refined sort of leather, it smells like a nice leather bag, like leather seats of a brand new sports car. So that's yeah. kind of what you get with this yeah. one, with like nice sweetness from like a raspberry and some nice spicy bits from the saffron. So that's predominantly what you get. Tesla leather, classic CEO scent, you can have a more wrong. What kind of um, performance do you get on it? Because I would consider the Tuscan leather to be one of Tom Ford's more beast mode fragrances. I hate using that word, but yeah. it really does for me. Like I get over 12, 14 hours wearing the Tuscan leather. Yeah, I get about the same, man. Yeah. It is beast. It's always been beast. It's never changed. The DNA has remained the same. And if that is your number two, I really gotta know. <laughs> Omar, tell me, man, after working so many years for Tom Ford fragrances, 
What comes in at your number one Tom Ford pick? My number one fragrance uh, would probably be a surprise to a lot of people. My number one is Noir de Noir. I feel like a long thought process. Noir de Noir comes in at number one. So I only have 10 mils here, unfortunately. Another classic. Yeah, it's another Tom classic Ford as well. Scent. It's also part of the originals that were launched in um, 2007 as well. Three words associated to this one, dark, sexy, and indulgent. Mr. Ford actually formulated this fragrance because he wanted a perfect unisex fragrance. It's sweet enough to be a female fragrance, and it's also rich and earthy enough to be a masculine fragrance. This fragrance has, um, you have your rose and your crocus flower. So your rose gives you that sort of, um, the velvety sort of rose gives you the female sort of face. The crocus flower gives you that flesh sort of floral bits that you get. And then the masculine side, you have the chocolate, you have the patchouli, and you have the truffleness. It's got that sort of rugged sort of bits with the patchouli, with the earthy sort of dirty, rugged bits. And it also has the feminine tenderness you get from the rose and from the crocus flower as well. It's almost like strawberries dipped in chocolate. That's the best way to actually um, describe this fragrance. That sounds like beautiful. Yeah, I, absolutely. Really so after like a long thought sort yeah. of process, I just had to narrow it down to know what they want. Again, very sexy fragrance. You yeah. know, Mr. So Mr. Ford is really sexual, he doesn't care about what people think. For this kind of scent, yeah. what kind of performance and longevity does it carry? A lot of customers would think that maybe with these, some of these notes, mm -hmm. it wouldn't last that long then. Oh, uh, uh, trust me, it's got patchouli in there. Patchouli, truffle, rose, it is heavy. It is on the heavy side. It doesn't project as long as your tobacco vanille and your Tuscan leather, but it lasts just as long as they do on skin. Thank you, Omar. This is the the expert word from a experienced Tom Ford sales rep. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've been out of the game for almost like a year now, but look, I still have some bits in me. Before we go, actually, yeah. man, I want you to tell me about your... It's called a kaftan, K-A-F-T-A-N. This is cotton. It's like really nice, breathable cotton. But like these caps are also handmade as well. They hand make them using like threads and stuff. The cat's beautiful. I know, man. man really like, colorful. I imagine wearing the breathable cotton because it's long, right? Yeah, that it is long. Imagine that fragrances when you wear it on your skin can really project really Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Because you're not light laid with no. jackets and Absolutely stuff. Absolutely not. No jackets involved. It's too hot for jackets. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, man. I really appreciate your time. We'll catch up again, do another video, maybe a Zerja or some other big names that, worry, um, that we both really love. Anytime, man. Just let me know. Right. If you guys want to follow Omar, oh yeah, my fragrance review page on Instagram, yeah, Solid Sense, yeah, which you do like uh, ratings and reviews on the perfumes Absolutely. that you love. Yeah, right? using infographics actually, that's what makes it cooler. Thanks guys, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next week with another episode. Alright, man, sweet. Bye, Bye. see ya. See you again.